The Shabaka Stone. This audio presentation is read and voiced by Shakim Ra. It is provided to the public by Amun Ra University. The Shabaka Stone, sometimes called Shabako, is a relic in size with an ancient Egyptian religious text which dates from the 25th dynasty of Kemet. In later years, the stone was likely used as a millstone, which damaged the hieroglyphs, the Medunetra. This damage is accompanied by other intentional defacements, leaving the hieroglyphic inscription in poor condition. Originally erected as a lasting monument at the Great Temple of Ptah in Memphis in the late 8th century BCE, the stone was at some point removed for unknown reasons to Alexandria. It was brought back along with the capital of an Egyptian column, fragments of a Greco-Roman black basalt capital, two fragments of quartzite lintel of Sinwasaret III, and a black granite kneeling statue of Ramesses II. In 1805, the stone was donated to the British Museum by George Spencer, 2nd Earl Spencer, 1758 to 1834, who was first Lord of the Admiralty and since 1794, the trustee of the museum. It wasn't until 1901 that the stone was deciphered, translated, and interpreted for the first time by the American Egyptologist James Henry Breasted. The monument has remained at the museum to the present day. The stone's dedicatory introduction claims that it is a copy of the surviving contents of a worm-ridden decaying papyrus found by the pharaoh Shabaka in the great temple of Ptah. Homer W. Smith dates the original text to the first dynasty, calling it the oldest written record of human thought. Breasted, Aldaf Ehrman, Kurt Seth, and Herman Junker all dated the stone to the Old Kingdom. The stone is archaic, both linguistically, its language is similar to that used in the pyramid text of the Old Kingdom, and politically, it alludes to the importance of Memphis as the first royal city. As such, Henry Frankfurt, John Wilson, Miriam Lighteen, and Eric Iverson have also assessed the stone to be from the Old Kingdom. However, Fred Wright Jones and most other scholars since then have argued that the monument was produced in the 25th dynasty. The stilla is around 137 centimeters or 54 inches wide with the left side height estimated at 91 centimeters or 36 inches and the right side about 95 centimeters or 37 inches. The written surface is 52 inches in width and on average 26 inches in height. The area of the surface which has been completely worn out measures 31 inches across. In 1901, James Henry Breasted identified the stone as a rectangular slab of black granite. While other scholars postulated that the monument was a slab or basalt or a conglomerate stone, a recent analysis by a scientist of the British Museum revealed the stone to be green breccia, originating from Wadi Hamamat. The text includes two main divisions with a short introduction and an ending summary. The first division relates the unification of Upper and Lower Kemet. Ptah works through Heru to accomplish this unification. The other is a creation myth, the Memphite theology or Memphite drama that establishes Ptah as the creator of all things, including the Necheru. The text stresses that it is in Memphis that the unification of Kemet took place. 
The inscription also states that this town was the burial place of Osir after he drifted ashore. Some parts of the stone were intentionally cut out during the dynastic period. This included the name of Seth, line 7, a god which was condemned during this time. Additionally, Samtik II or Samtik III erased the proper name and throne name of Shabaka from the stone. Samtik III then engraved his name onto the stone, but his name was in turn erased by the Persians during their conquest. The living Heru who benefits the two lambs, the golden Heru, the ruler of Upper and Lower Kemet, Neferka-Ra, the son of Ra, Shabaka, loved by Ptah, who lives like Ra forever. This is a new copy by the King Shabaka in the house of his father, Ptah. The king founded was a work of the ancestors that was decaying, such that it could not be read in its entirety. The king recopied this work so that it is better than it was before, so that his name would be honored in the house of his father Ptah forever, a work done by the son of Ra, Shabaka, for his father Ptah. Ruler of Upper and Lower Kemet is Ptah, who is referred to by his great name, Ta Tenen, south of his wall, God of Eternity. Geb, the ruler of the lesser gods, expressions of God, ordered the nine gods to gather before him. He ruled between Heru and Set and ended their fight. He made Set to rule Upper Kemet, up to the areas where he was born, Su. He made Heru, ruler of Lower Kemet, up to where his father Asar was drowned. Heru ruled over one area and Set ruled over the other. They made peace at Ayan. Geb told Seth to go to the place where he was born, and he told Heru to go to the place where his father drowned. I have separated you both, Geb said. Then Geb thought again about his decision and thought it was wrong to give Heru the same allotment as he had given Seth, since Heru was the son of his firstborn son. Asa. He decided to give Heru his inheritance. He told the nine gods that he decided to give Heru alone the inheritance, the son of his son. Heru the jackal of Upper Kemet. Heru then was the uniter of the land, proclaimed in the name of Ptah. Heru and Set were satisfied. They ended their fight and were united in the house of Ptah, wherever they existed. Aset in Neptes, Asar is buried in the house of Seker. Hurry, for he has drowned in the river. Aset in Neptes began to look for Asar and say, We come, we take you. They brought him to safety and he entered the unseen doors to the area of the Lords of Eternity. Heru arose as king of Upper and Lower Kemet in the embrace of his father Asar and of the deities which stood before him and behind him. Aset spoke to Heru and said, Make peace. Life will be great for you when you make peace. It is he who dries your tears. Ptah is that which brings the lesser deities into being. Ptah not wet, mother of our tomb. Ptah is great, the heart and tongue of the nine gods. There took shape in his heart. There took shape on his tongue, the form of our tomb. Ptah gave life to all the lesser gods and their cause. Through his heart and tongue, from the same has Heru come forth as Ptah, and from the same, Tehuti has come forth as Ptah. The heart and tongue control all the limbs of the body. 
the heart or pata is in every body and the tongue of pata is in every mouth in all gods all men all cattle all creeping things whatever is alive thinking whatever it wills and commanding whatever it wills pata's lesser gods are before him as his teeth and his lips they are the semen and hands of atum the lesser gods are the teeth and lips of pata which say the name of everything from which shu and tefnut came into being and from which the lesser gods themselves came into being hearing seeing and breathing all feed into the heart the heart makes every belief come forth the tongue repeats what the heart believes so all of the lesser gods were born every word of every god came through what the heart devised and the tongue ordered thus all of the components were made and all of the qualities were decided so justice is done to those who do what is love and punishment to those who do what is hated so life is given to those who are and exude hotep peace and death is given to those who are evil all work all artwork all actions of the hands all movement of the legs all movements of all the limbs according to the orders which are devised by the heart and come forth on the tongue creates the doing of everything so pata is that which made all and created all deities that which gave birth to the gods and from whom everything came forth food provisions divine offerings and everything that is good the great seat that gives joy to the heart of the gods Asar was drowned in his water. Aset and Neptes looked out for him. They helped him and stopped him from going under. Heru told them to grab him. They acted just in time and brought him back to shore. Asar entered the secret doorways to the lords of eternity. In the footsteps of he who rises in the horizon, the steps of Ra at the great seat Asa entered the palace and joined the gods of Ptah, Lord of Years, for eternity. <laughs>